On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the United States Coast Guard has boarded the motor vessel MSC Dannett for its involvement in the pipeline strike off the ports of L.A. and Long Beach back in January of this year. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. So we've got this breaking news that came out uh, from a variety of different sources, including a Coast Guard statement that I want to show you involving the role that this vessel played back in January that eventually led to the rupture of the pipeline that dumped oil on the beaches off Huntington and, and Newport beaches. So let's go ahead and hop over to that. So this is the Coast Guard statement that came out from United States Coast Guard Southwest, uh, the 11th district. And what it says is Coast Guard issues party of interest designation to owner operator of container vessel in Orange County pipeline major Marine casualty investigation. Uh, U.S. Coast Guard and the NTSB and the Marine casualty investigators boarded the container ship MSC Danit Saturday in the port of Long Beach. And just to let you know uh, where she is and who she is, here she is right here. She's at anchor. She just came in on October 15th from Shanghai, sailed on uh, October 2nd. So the Danit came in here uh, on the 15th. Coast Guard has boarded the vessel. It goes on to sit here and say, uh, prior to the visit, Lieutenant Commander Brandon Rostat, the Chief of Investigations for Los Angeles, uh, Long Beach, determined that the MSC Danit was involved in the January 25th, 2021 anchor dragging incident during a heavy weather event that impacted the ports. The anchor dragging, it, dragging incident occurred in close proximity to a subsea pipeline, which was subs subsequently discovered to be the source of the Orange County oil spill on October 2nd. 2021. So we're talking about a span of nine months almost here between when the vessel struck the pipeline till eventually we got the oil spill. As a result, uh, Coast Guard designated the MSC, the Mediterranean Shipping Company, the operator of the vessel and Dordorellis Finance Corporation, the owner of the vessels as parties of interest in the marine casualty investigation under U.S. code. I'm not going all that. The party and interest designation provide the owner and operator of Dan at the opportunity to be represented by counsel to examine and cross-examine witnesses and the call and the call witnesses who are relevant to the investigation. Uh, so let's break this down a little bit. Now, there's a Yahoo story on this, too, that came out that talks about this in a little bit more detail. I'm going to go down and kind of break this story down for you. But the real uh, a source that's coming this out of is coming out of this group right here, Sky Truth. Sky Truth is the one that kind of broke this story uh, on the 17th. Uh, and what they're talking about here is using AIS data to really show what happened here. And I'm going to break that down and talk about it in a second. But before we do that, let's discuss what's going on right now. So as we know, MSC Dana came in on its normal run. Now, this ship has been operating between the United States and China on a fairly routine basis. So the boarding of the vessel is significant. Uh, the question is they want to get information from ship logs and interview the crew. The problem is I'm not sure who the crew is left on board this vessel from back in January. You're going to have rotations. You're going to have crews coming off. There's no telling who's on board here, who has been part of it. I also question the fact whether or not the crew has any evidence on here because if this ship had been involved in the pipeline hit i would imagine that the owners would not allow this vessel to keep operating between the united states uh for fear that what's going to happen next i think is the vessel is going to be arrested uh ships like people can be physically arrested in other words held liable for charges and that would mean this vessel would not be allowed to sail and leave because basically what the U.S. government can do is hold the vessel for restitution of damages, uh, much like what happened to Ever Given in the Suez Canal during um, um, the 100 days it was held after it grounded. So we're potentially getting ready to see this. So here's some details on the Danit that kind of pulled up here from marine traffic. So she sailed again from uh, Shanghai. Voyage of 14 days, uh, four hours here. She's built in 2009, so a fairly modern vessel, 2009, 12 years old. She's registered in Panama. Uh, she's classified by uh, DNV, uh, built in Korea. Her owners are Mediterranean Shipping Company, and her managers are also Mediterranean Shipping Company. You go into more detail right here. It breaks it down. So it goes into basically the manager, which is Mediterranean Shipping Company, the technical manager, which is the, the crewing company. They're out of Italy, out of Naples. 
specifically is where they're out of. And then their P&I club, their protection and indemnity insurance club is UK P&I. That was also the, the uh, P&I club for Ever Given. So there is a potential here for massive lawsuits against this vessel. And the cleanup, the, the, the damage that was done to Huntington and Newport beaches, all of that can be levied against Mediterranean Shipping Company and its operator. Now, one of the things that's, that's important to note here, and it's, it's in this statement right here that they're talking about, you'll notice here, Coast Guard designated Mediterranean Shipping Company, the operator of the vessel, and Dordorellis Finance Corporation, the owner of the vessel. So the operator of the vessel is Mediterranean Shipping. The owner is Dordorellis Finance Corporation. One of the things shipping companies do is create these individual finance corporations, businesses to finance individual vessels so that there's nothing to sue against. Uh, you very rarely see these vessels owned by the operating companies like Mediterranean Shipping, like Maersk. They'll be owned by this finance corporation. This finance corporation, I pulled it up, is out of Panama. Uh, she's Panama Registry. So it's going to be hard to find any money at the end of that beyond what the insurance has and then the vessel itself. And all of that comes into, in, into play here, including the cargo that's on board this vessel right now, because even though this cargo is has nothing to do with what happened back in January, if this vessel gets seized, its cargo may be seized. And if this vessel declares general average, that cargo may have to pay extra money to get off. This is a very open-ended scenario. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. So let's go to the events as laid out here by Sky Truth. So this is the chart for the area in question. This is this is the area right here. Let's see if we can zoom in here. This is the chart for the area here. These are the designated anchorages right here. I apologize, it's hard to see. Uh, it's hard to get a really good chart here to kind of look at this. These are the designated anchorages. These are the very end anchorages here. And this is the pipeline that runs around here. And we know that this vessel is in it. So this is the Facebook link. And I'm gonna have all these links obviously available to you. But this is the Facebook link that Sky Truth put out a few hours ago. We found them based on the tip from reporter Robert Tuttle at Bloomberg News that we received on Friday evening. Can be clear, we knew, I mean, a lot of people knew it was the MSC Danit. We just didn't have access to the AIS. I didn't have access to the AIS or else unknown it. I heard this story from quite a few weeks ago. We used IS tracking from Exact Earth to show that during a high wind event on January 25th, the Danit moved very erratically across the seafloor pipeline that takes oil from platform Ellie to shore. A leak from the pipeline caused a large spill, we know that. While it crossed back and forth over the pipeline at least three times between 5 a.m. and 9 a.m., likely dragging the anchor and possibly snagging, moving, and damaging the exposed pipeline. So I zoomed into each of these maps here to kind of show them to you. So this is her in the anchorage right here. This is her in the anchorage. You notice that little cluster. So again, go back to the earlier video I did when I talked about how vessels anchor and how they're secured to the bottom. So this diagram I pulled up kind of shows you how vessels anchor. The anchor itself, believe it or not, doesn't hold the vessel. It's the anchor in the chain. So ships will let out chain. The depth of water here is roughly around 90 feet, which is about one shot, one shot of chain, 90 feet or, or 15 fathoms is a shot of chain. And usually you let out anywhere from two to five times the depth of the water. So she should have had out between two shots to five shots. So we're, we're talking about eight, you know, uh, 180 to 450 feet of chain out there to hold her in place. And you put more chain out as the weather gets rougher or you expect more pull on the chain. Now, what happened to her is she sat here at anchor and you can see her clustered right here over this little spot right here. This is probably right over the anchor, right where the anchor sat. Uh, and what you would do is you would drop your anchor and then back away from the anchor and lay your chain out. You want a nice kind of flat, straight lay. And so she's probably hanging, not actually over the anchor, but over where the chain would go and hit the bottom right there. And then you can see her kind of swinging on the anchor right here. You can see her when the wind comes. If the wind's coming from the west, she would head out here toward the east. If the wind's coming from the south, she'd head to the north. If the wind's coming from the north, she'd head to the south. And you sat there and swing and swing. And, and that's basically what you do. And that's why when you look on this chart here, you see these big circles. What you want to do is anchor right here in the middle of the circle so that you have a nice good swing area for it. 
And these anchorages right here are federally designated. The anchorages are set up by the Coast Guard, cleared areas. You'll notice the pipeline over here is a clear area. But what we see right here is she begins to move. And this is what's called dragging the anchor. Literally, you're dragging the anchor. The anchor is no longer holding. The chain and the anchor, even though you have the flukes of the anchor maybe dug in, are starting to drag across the bottom. And what you do is, you know, a mate on watch, the officer in the bridge, will be taking radar bearings, uh, be looking at the GPS. And what you notice is you're moving. You, you are physically moving here. And you'll see the vessel begins to move. Now, remember, what this is showing you is where the GPS transponder is. Come back here again to the picture of the Danit. That antenna is probably up here on the bridge. So you're about a third of the way back on this vessel. This vessel is probably about, let's see what the length is on the vessel. Uh, we should have a size here. Here we go. 365.5 meters. So you're talking about over a thousand feet long. So she's a third of the way back. So you're probably about 300 feet back here from the bow. And then probably as she started to drag because of the wind event, they laid out more anchor chain so that even though when you cross the, the pipeline here, the anchor hasn't hit yet. Right here, as you can see, the vessel begins to move, begins to move, begins to move, begins to move, and then all of a sudden stops right here. That's when the anchor got hung up on the pipeline right there. You can see where the anchor hung up. This is her right here hung up on the pipeline. And what she would have to do is get her engines going and steam back here toward the pipeline to unhook from the unhook at that point. What you happen to have to do is, is start steaming into the wind and start pulling your chain up. And it looks right here is where she got hung up here. You can see her kind of dragging right along here, trying to get that chain up and get off of there. And then she steamed out toward the west to get into the lee of Santa, uh, 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 Santa uh, Catalina Island. Excuse me, having a little problem talking this morning. Catalina Island. And the, the images here kind of show all that. And this is where the suspected pipeline break is. And you can see now why there would have been a displacement of the pipe where she's hung up on here and what we'd really like to see right now is a gps of where that pipeline was and where it currently is right now so this is pretty damning evidence right here so obviously the coast guards on board the vessel right now they're going to be looking at logs they'll be looking at inf information unfortunately the the vessel data recorder probably doesn't have any evidence of this at all because it records over itself it doesn't really dump off into a memory of any kind so they're gonna to have to be looking at logs they'll be interviewing crew members who may have been on board during that incident to see what's going on but the bigger question i have to say again is and i go back to the original video i did on this even though we were looking at the different vessel at the time because we were looking at that moment we thought it happened in october when the when the pipeline started leaking is this this is the vessel traffic uh, system LA Long Beach has a vessel traffic system. There are lanes coming in and the Marine Exchange of Southern California, along with US Coast Guard Southwest control this vessel traffic system. And I pulled up their manual again, and I had this up before. This is from uh, the Marine Exchange. VTS is the vessel traffic service, is a public private partnership. It's the only one like this, by the way. It's the only one that's operated um, uh, privately. Uh, for the ports of LA and Long Beach, it's jointly operated and managed by the Marine Exchange and the Coast Guard. BTS cooperative e effort, and goes on here and talks about this, established back in March 1st, 1994, made our ports safer, cleaner, and more efficient. Well, local control of ETS operations, procedures, fees, all that kind of, let's talk about this. Covers hundreds of thousands of commercial vessels, but I want to get down here to the area it talks at, right here, partnership with the Coast Guard. BTS employs state-of-the-art tracking communication equipment, including a unique replay device for demonstration archive of all incident data. The Coast Guard personnel analyze this data for waterway management issues that arise. It is this vital data that supports changes in forces standards for federal RNA regulations, rules of the road, et cetera. And so if this is state-of-the-art, why then when this vessel started to drag and this is a better image of it right here. When this vessel started to drag and get hung up here along the pipeline, there were not bells and whistles back in January of 2021 when this happened versus October when the leak happened. If this vessel got hung up as it demonstrated it did, running right here, right along the pipeline, parallel to the pipeline during a high wind event, that should have sent out warning buzzers through the roof. This should have sent all of a sudden 
warning out there because what should have happened immediately after this is that the owner of the pipeline go out there, survey the pipeline. If they saw the pipeline had been displaced 100 feet for 4,000 feet of pipeline, so it had been moved laterally 100 feet, 4,000 feet of it, that should have given warning they could have stopped pumping through it, could have conducted inspections like they did back in October, send a pig through the pipeline to see whether or not there's been cracking or damage to the pipeline. They could have cut that section out of the pipeline, flushed it with, with seawater, cut that section of the pipeline, put new pipeline in, and made sure that this leak never took place. And that's the issue we're talking about here. Vessel traffic control around US ports is not handled like airline traffic. It's not handled where the VTS system is giving directions in a way that we do with airlines. And the fact that MSC Danit was able to pull anchor, they had to have known they were hung up on something. They had to have known they were hung up because they sat there and, and steamed in that area to get that anchor up. They may not know it was a pipeline, give them benefit of the doubt. Maybe they know it was a pipeline, but they knew they were hung up on something. Something should have been reported down the chain. And so, you know, while MSC Danit is going and Mediterranean Shipping Company and the owner company is going to be on the hook for this, I think we also have to look at the control responsibilities here and oversight that's provided by the VTS system. So there's a lot of issues at play here, and I, I think we need to be careful about who we identify as the culprit in this incident. So anyway, quick video. Just want to give you an update on that. It was really interesting that it came out. Uh, I want to give my hats off to the Sky Truth people for getting that information out there. Good data coming out from them. Hats off to the Coast Guard for leading this investigation. But again, we need to go back and look at this. Because of the amount of traffic off the port of LA and Long Beach, we need to be getting more control over that anchorage and ensuring that everything is safe. This is not caused by the vessels getting too big. We, we hear that talk about a lot. Again, vessels will get bigger. They'll get larger. We just have to have controls in place for vessels. Ship like this in a high wind event and should have been ordered to head back out to sea. At least the anchorages close to the pipeline should have been vacated at that point. Much like Ever Given going into the Suez Canal in a high wind event, you really don't want ultra large container ships in the narrow part of the Suez Canal. So anyway, this is Sal McCoglano. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. Go ahead, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up. And if you can at all help support the page, I would appreciate it. I have a Patreon page where it allows me to devote more time to the videos and really kind of increase the numbers and the quality of them. So until our next video, Sal, signing off.